If you will play from a copy of a two-minute choppy, you'll get all my applause. And that is perfectly because I want to listen to through some of the types of dental problems. And bunnies can do all sorts of things, you know, with, um, within a kind of a spectrum. And so here's some incisor malocclusion. Malocclusion means bad meeting. Um, and so here, it's very subtle, just a little bit of an angle there, so where it should be straight across. And then as we saw in this picture from before, the lowers in front of the uppers, these are pretty obvious uh, incisor malocclusion. And sometimes that happens that, the reason why that happened might be that when they were young, their incisors were not meeting correctly and then just worse, got worse and worse over time till, uh, till they got that bad. You can certainly have where they fracture some incisors and then they start to grow back abnormally. Okay, so here we have x-rays that are a little abnormal. So you can see where that lower incisor is hitting that upper incisor. If you can't see it and if you need to come up, you can come up and see it. On this x-ray, the lowers are actually almost in front of in the incisors. And so you can imagine over time that that could become one of those tusk rabbits. So, and the molar's actually looking pretty good on this one. On this rabbit, we have some elongation of the molars, maybe a little abscess, small infection of that tooth, and some irregular bone down here. Oh yeah, there's the close-up of that. So, and then just some more examples of some incisors that are abnormal. This one, the incisors are straight out. So, and this one, the incisors are short on the outs on the exposed part, but the the um, the part of the incisor that's under the the bone is very irregular. And then we also have a lot of uh, molar disease as well. Okay, so now we're getting into molar problems, the back teeth, the cheek teeth. So here's a view, this is the right side, so you're looking in the mouth this way, and this is his right lower teeth that are spiking towards the tongue, and sometimes that can even cause lacerations in the tongue, and, and you know, think about every time you move your tongue, it's scraping against this needle. So, um, so it is a very painful thing. Here's another example, you can see the spike here, um, and it's almost like over the tongue. Sometimes they can live with that and, you know, it just goes over the tongue and doesn't bother them as much um, because, but it, when it cuts into the tongue, that's where you usually get a lot of drool. So, um, here there's a little tiny spur and there's actually, there's the wound on the tongue, a little laceration. And then this is the upper left molar that's going, growing towards the cheek. And then we saw that picture also before, same thing. So they can have uh, molar issues. And what this, I don't know if you can see it, it came out pretty, pretty light. But so this is an example of normal molar, lower and upper molars where you have, this is mostly straight and slight curve. And then when you have a tooth that's like that, because they're supposed to be like that, but if they start to grow this way, every time they grow in, they're just gonna go straight towards the tongue. And you just, there's no trimming that's really gonna help that. And that just shows how severely curved they get. So, and those those rabbits, those, those spikes will grow quickly and those teeth need to be trimmed like every two to four weeks. So, okay. And then here we are looking at some molar malocclusion. Like here's one really, really long one going down this way. There might even be an abscess down here. And then we have a first molar here growing up. And this, uh, here we have, it actually looks like an abscess pushing the, the molar roots apart, and again, seeing how it affects the incisors. <clears throat> Okay, so they can get jaw abscesses, and so here's another picture of a, a jaw abscess, and... Okay, so this is a this tooth is coming down here and it's got a little hook on it, and so it's got a very small abscess around it. So in feeling that rabbit, what we would feel would be like a pea, or maybe the size of two peas lump. And so pretty small, you know, pretty insignificant. And so that's why it's so important to feel along the bottom and along the sides of those bottom jaws. And sometimes you can find things early. So, and this obviously really, really big abscess um, that might even be involving the root of the lower incisor. Look how abnormal that is. These teeth, instead of the roots being like this, they're all spread out like this too. Um, so there's abscess of those molar roots. Here's another abscess. And now you were talking about 
um, if, the, if it was going to feel bony or soft. And here's the example. So this is going to be soft tissue swelling. Okay, because the bone is up here. Bone is very white on x-rays. And here you can see this is bony swelling. The bone has regrown um, to be very abnormal, and there's also a tooth kind of crooked all through that abscess. Okay, so it can do either. It can either burst out with soft abscess, you know, pus underneath the skin, or the bone can, can grow over time. And then this is an example. This is a CT scan of this rabbit here, which on x-rays you can, so this is the x-ray, this is the CT. So here you can see there's an abscess in this area. These tooth roots are abnormal looking. And then on the CT scan, the abscess is right here. And you can even see that these molars are meeting very horizontally and they don't have that normal angle like on the other side. And then this is the nasal cavity, so up in that area. Any questions? Okay, uh, here's the tear duct slide. Okay, so so with uh, tear duct obstruction, then you can, it can be just an infection of the duct or it can be compression from the tooth root. And so they, rabbits only have one tear duct opening, humans have two, and so it's actually pretty large, it's like larger than the human one, so it's easy to find. And this is a picture of, of a tear duct flush. And we can use a soft catheter and some saline to try to flush the duct. And sometimes when you flush it, it'll, it won't come out and you just keep flushing gently, trying to flush it, and then you can get it to, to empty out and clean out the tear duct. And so if you're able to do that, then a lot of times the tearing will go away. But sometimes there's nothing you can do, and if you push too hard, it's just you're gonna like break through and rupture the tear duct. And so you don't want that because I've seen abscesses occur. And so, um, you know, sometimes you just can't open it up and then you're just going to have chronic tearing that you have to clean off. Sometimes what will happen is, is you'll have two bunnies together and one passes away and all of a sudden the other one starts to have a teary eye because we didn't realize that the friend was cleaning it all the time. So now this shows the, where the tear duct is. This is a dye study. So the eye is here. And then here's the, the syringe coming in with the dye, and the duct runs down here and then comes up here. And here's that incisor root, and then here's your molar root. So you can see how the molars could push up on the, the tear duct here, or the incisor root could push up here. Okay, so I've had some rabbits where if their incisors are hitting and their eyes start to tear and sometimes they, they start to sneeze a little bit, and we trim their incisors and everything improves. So, because we're decreasing the pressure. Would, mm -hmm. Kemper, would uh, sneezing play into any of this? They could be, if you have um, uh, incisor issues where they're pressing against each other, that's going to cause inflammation of your incisor roots, and then that could certainly cause sneezing. I want to listen to, I want to listen to, I want to listen to a